What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're back with some more r slash entitled parents. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. Especially that like right now as it's really helping this channel out and I can't stress that enough. <laughs> a huge thank you to the members of our channel and we have a new member from yesterday, Dill Pickle 1997 Thank you very much and thank you to the other members of our channel as well. It's truly appreciated. And with that being said, let's get straight into today's stories. Much love guys. Our first story comes from Toxic Sprinkles. EM steals from our house and destroys my Apple Pencil. Okay, so here are some roles. EM, obviously entitled mum. D, daughter. I'm not going to list the obvious ones. So anyways, I've been dealing with EM for a while now. Recently, we've cut her off from us, but here's a story from a couple of days ago. Keep in mind, this is only a tiny bit of what she did to us. She's stolen way more than I even talk about in this post, but it'd be too long. It starts out with me playing on my Switch and D comes to the door. Since I literally hate everything about EM and her family, I groan and open the door. D asks if she can come in and play with my sisters. Her mum has already driven off and EM texted nobody about her coming. I asked my parents and they let her come in because her mum has already driven off, so we couldn't really do much. D ends up forcing my mum to do her nails. My mum does a lot of stuff with nails. She runs her mouth about how she doesn't like how messy our house is. It's not even that bad, just some misplaced toys slash boxes here and there. A couple of hours later, EM comes to the door and she asks my mum to do her nails. My mum reluctantly does them for her because she wants to be nice. EM starts to criticise every tiny little thing about the nails. My mum is doing them for free and is not a professional. She has taught herself, does she really think that every small little thing has to be perfect? She then started doing the dishes, which is something I usually do, but she would always be like, I got it and get me to go away by throwing random already clean dishes and even my sister's toys. Yeah, you heard that right, in the sink and just putting them in water without any soap. It was all wonky how she did it and I can't even begin to describe how weird she was when doing them, if that makes any sense. Anyways, she leaves without telling anyone. And guess what we find missing? Our paper towels, bread, toilet paper, cleaning supplies and my Apple Pencil was missing, which is usually attached to my iPad, but it was charging in the kitchen which is the only place that charges things in our house. So we tell her not to come over anymore. I was pissed and I knew this would happen. After that, she texted my dad for money, but of course we just ignored it. So my mum looks in the sink a couple hours after we told her off and guess what she finds? My fucking Apple Pencil in the sink, drowned in water. She broke it. I was fucking furious at this point. Ian steals all this shit from us and the cherry on the fucking cake, I can't do digital art. Nobody else was near the sink on that day except for her. I knew she did it. I just don't understand why. Maybe it was because we didn't give her money one time. Who fucking knows with that psychopath? I'll get into it more, but it's just way too much. I'm terrible at writing my experiences and stuff, so if you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. I also know how many of these entitled parent stories are fake, so if you want proof of anything, just ask and I can provide it. Also, I do take some blame. I shouldn't have left my tablet in the kitchen where she could easily get it. I know she's psychotic and could do anything. I should have just been thinking. I'm just really pissed about how much was stolen and that I can't draw again. Wow, there's no way that's your fault for leaving your own possessions in your own kitchen and someone stealing it, messing it up and putting it in the sink. What the hell is that about? But as we always say on this channel, always press charges. <laughs> Our next story is from Matsuyo Riffic. EM thinks she can ignore hotel policy and complains when her power is shut off for non-payment. I've been waiting for a story to post on here and finally, today's the day. Also, hi to Voicey and Captain Zack if you're reading this. Oh dear. <laughs> Backstory. I work in the complaint department, CD, of a national hotel chain. I deal with entitlement on a daily basis and get my fair share of Karens and Richards on a daily basis. If I can go a single day without having to deal with entitled people, it's a sign that I'm going to win the lottery. The worst part is, when they have legitimate issues, like they couldn't get checked in because the hotel was overbooked, but the front desk didn't cancel the reservation and they got charged a no show fee, these instances are usually an easy fix. Just let me confirm the charge and submit a case for you, and most general managers are pretty good about refunding them. But the entitled ones always act like we did it on purpose and will refuse to refund them, so they start yelling about how it's illegal for us to charge them. I understand their frustration, but them yelling at me won't solve anything. 
they're basically just making it harder to get their money back. Now, this particular day, I did not sleep well the night before and had quite the migraine. I just gotten off the phone with one of the riches described above and it was not helping me to feel better. I said, thank you for calling CD. My name is Masuyo. Can I get your first and last name, please? Karen says, finally, I've been on hold forever. I said, I'm sorry about the wait. We've been busy with a virus and I get cut off. The GM called me earlier, but I'm at work, so I couldn't talk. I just got a call from my daughter and they turned the power off in our room. She has to sit in the hallway just to get her phone charged. You need to look into this hotel. How dare they turn the power off on a bunch of children? They said I don't even have a reservation, which is BS. My sister booked the room and I paid for it. I won't go into the full conversation, but it was essentially 10 minutes of her yelling and griping before I could even get her name. Fortunately, she had a pretty uncommon last name, so it was easy to find a reservation. Normally, I need to ask the city and state to narrow it down, but it's a good thing her name was so uncommon or I would have never found it. Every time I would try to say anything, she would interrupt me. While listening to her rant, I found the culprit. She was rebooking two days at a time through a third-party company. Anyone who has ever worked for a hotel knows that these third-party reservations are the worst to deal with and can cause all sorts of problems. But that wasn't the cause of the issue this time. Oh no, she hadn't been checked in the hotel for two whole days. Basically, she arrived on Monday and paid for Monday and Tuesday, meaning that checkout is Wednesday. She then rebooked the room to continue her stay, but she made it for Thursday instead. Today was Friday, and the fact that it showed me late cancel told me she never checked into it and was probably charged a no-show fee. She also had another reservation for today that was ready to get checked into. This meant that she had been in the hotel without a reservation for two days. Now, this would have been an easy fix had she not neglected to go down to the front desk to switch reservations. They would have seen that she would book for the wrong day, set up with another reservation for the night, and she would just have to repeat the next day. Finally, I got a chance to speak and started to advise her. She kept interrupting to yell at me, so it took me many, many attempts to get all that information out. She said, that's not true. I don't have to check in if I'm already at the hotel. A few more interruptions later, and I finally managed to get it out. I said, mom, since you rebooked the room, you have to go to the front desk to check out the old reservation and check into the new one. Otherwise, they're going to ask you to leave. She said, is it your policy to turn power off on a bunch of minors? That was clearly a rhetorical question because she did not allow me to answer. At this point, I'm so done with this woman, I turn my mic off, flip off my phone and start shouting profanities. I'm working from home thanks to COVID, so I can be as loud as I want without having to worry about disturbing my neighbours. It's such a great stress reliever. Finally, I'm able to get out that I would like to submit a case for her, but I'm barely able to tell her that I need her phone number. Finally, she got fed up with dealing with me herself and handed me off to someone else. The other person said, hello. I said, hi, I'd like to create a case. Can I get the best phone number to reach you at? And there was silence. I said, hello. I look at my phone and I can see the call has ended. I'm relieved that I don't have to deal with that Karen anymore, but now I have to deal with the nightmare of putting her case together. I just barely have enough to submit anything. Had I not been able to find the reservation on my own, I wouldn't even know what hotel she was at. Can't submit a case without that. I was so done with her that I just did not really care she literally made it impossible for anyone to do anything for her. Since I never got around to pulling up a receipt for the cancelled Thursday reservation, I couldn't know if she'd been charged a no-show fee or not. There was a phone number on a reservation, but for all I knew, it wasn't even hers, so I couldn't use it without verifying it with her first. After all, I've seen a third-party reservations all the time where the guest information is replaced by the companies. And to top it all off, I hadn't even been able to advise a callback. We normally advise one to two days for a callback, which most people are okay with. But I'm sure Karen would have demanded a callback right that minute, and then demanded my supervisor when I told her I couldn't do it. <sighs> I'm way too tired to deal with this crap. <laughs> The thing that jumped out to me with this story instantly was that she's left minors in a room by themselves in a hotel room. Is that a normal thing to do? <laughs> Doesn't strike me as a normal thing to do, but we are talking about a Karen here, so hey. <laughs> Our next story is from Light vs Dark 777. Entitled mum tries to deny her dying son his wish and tries to kill him because the books I got him are satanic. Some backstory, I'm in a D&D group with a couple of friends from nearby and one of the members of the group was a kid who was about 15 years old. He's a really sweet kid, likes helping other people out and he's a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons. He also has cancer in both of his lungs. He's from a religious family that basically forces him to act pure while he's in their sight. The mum is WBC level rabid while the dad is just a sensible person who just tries to get him to be a good kid. When he's out of sight of his parents, he just does normal teen stuff. Because of his mum, the only books he was allowed to own were Christian books and Bibles. He joined our group mainly as a way to escape his home life and his mum. 
A couple of weeks ago, the cancer in his lungs started to get to him, so he was taken to hospital by his parents. He contacted me about this the day after he was taken to hospital, stating he wanted to get a monster manual as his last wish, stating that he was tired of reading the same things. I bought him some books from Barnes & Noble, but considering he's a dying teen, I got him Volo's Guide to Monsters and Mordekin's Tome of Foes stacked on top of that. The next day, which was his birthday, he was still in hospital, so I brought him the books as a gift. After he blew out the candles, we had a cake and he started opening gifts. Mine was the first one to be opened. Seeing what they were, he immediately got this humongous grin on his face and hugged me. Meanwhile, his mum stared down at the books with a look of pure disgust, with her husband staring at her with this wary look in his eyes. She picks up one of the books and relights one of the candles and holds the damn book over it to try and set it on fire. I manage to stop her and demand, what the fuck are you doing? He asked me to get those books and I'm not going to let you take them away. His mum simply stared me down and said something along the lines of these books being sinful, satanic and full of evil that her son had no business with them. I retort and say that her son can read what he wants and that she shouldn't have to force him to be Christian. She starts getting red in the face and yelling at me about essentially forcing children to believe in God from a young age. I state that I'm a Baptist, which I actually am, and say that faith in God is a matter between God and the individual. She turns red all over and actively starts to try and destroy the books, with me, my friend and her husband trying to stop her. At one point I shouted, would God want you to do this to restrict your dying son's freedom of expression? Right in her face. This just sets her a fucking blaze. She tosses the books aside and starts to try to strangle her son and her husband calls security immediately when she does this. Security get here within about a minute or two of us trying to pry EM off her son and drag her away. With her shouting that we're all catamites of the devil, both her husband and my friend charge her with child abuse, assault and attempted murder. Trial's still going and I tried to update this post as the trial goes on. There was a couple of edits on the post but edit 4 was trial was almost a disaster, me, him and her husband all prosecuted against her. The moment she saw us, she tried to tackle us, shouting something about divine retribution, but the officers restrained her. During the whole thing, she kept pinning the blame on me and him, calling us corrupted by sin. Needless to say, she was pronounced guilty of all three charges that I mentioned earlier. The moment she heard this, she went apeshit and tried to attack the judge, but officer tased her to the floor. Now she'll be serving for 20 years for the other three charges, with 10 more on top of assaulting the court official. Thank you all for the support you guys gave. Now, <laughs> how crazy can a story get? Now, we've read previous stories about D&D &D and religion before and the Satanists, and apparently this happens quite a lot about people calling D&D &D satanic and things like that. You guys have corrected me on that before. But wow, trying to strangle your own son? Really? <laughs> how mad? Anyway, guys, thank you for being here today. It is truly appreciated. If you do have a moment of your day, please don't forget to hit that like button. And as it's truly been helping just recently, I can't express how much that helps. Also, if you go onto one of our playlists and go through that, that also helps the channel massively. If you just let it scroll through and listen like that, it massively helps. Truly, truly, truly. <laughs> thank you so much for being here once again. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, although we're all stuck inside. So yeah, have a good one. Much love, guys.